from our homes on this second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, we gather in spirit to continue our celebration and share in the joy of the risen Lord. We pray that our Lord may grant us mercy and forgiveness of sins through our spiritual communion and grant us a place in the eternal kingdom. Sing to the Lord, Alleluia, sing to the Lord, all nations. God has made salvation known. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing to the Lord, sing a new song. Praise the Lord with shouts of gladness. Let us begin our worship with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death you raise us with him, and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our hearts and minds the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people towards the fullness of eternal life with you. We make this prayer through your risen Son, Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who welcomed the message of Peter were baptized, and many were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods, and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The Word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord for his good, his Lord. 
reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, a birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Perhaps this year, more than any other, we can begin to sympathise with the situation Jesus' disciples found themselves in, locked away, self-confined, and fearful of the world they had suddenly been thrust into. In a very short space of time, their world had been turned on its head. Their leader, 
the one whom they had followed, and lauded as their king, the one who would lead them into a new age, had been arrested, tortured, and put to death. Their lives, everything they had been working towards, all the ideas they must have had for their future, had been cut down in a single stroke, and they were suddenly left floundering, without direction, their faith in Christ shattered. Is it any wonder, then, that they may have been struggling to determine what to believe, what was true, and what was rumour or deception? We hear in the Gospel on Easter Sunday that Mary Magdalene, after her encounter with the risen Christ, went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. We are not told how this was received. By the simple fact that this week's gospel begins with the disciples locked away in fear, we can deduce that Mary's news was likely met with some doubt. The disciples would have been struggling to adjust to the situation they found themselves in, and this news would have seemed too good to be true or perhaps even a desperate denial of the need to adapt and change to the current circumstances. It is not hard to assume that the reactions of the disciples may have been much like the one we hear from Thomas in today's Gospel. Unless I see, I will not believe. It is in this atmosphere of doubt and fear that Jesus appears to his disciples offering his peace. Given concrete evidence that, although everything appeared to have fallen to pieces, this had not been a mistake or a failure, but rather part of the plan, the disciples' faith is restored, and they once again place their trust in the Lord. Much like the disciples, our world has been turned on its head. Many people have had their lives turned upside down overnight, losing their jobs, having to shut their businesses, and seeing their plans shattered. The things that we accepted as part of everyday life, and things we thought would be ever constant, have suddenly disappeared or changed. For the first time in our remembered history, the churches have shut their doors. For many of us, this is difficult to reconcile with the path we thought we were on. We have been left floundering, trying to adjust to our new circumstances, our faith tested. It is at this time that we can draw upon the story of today's Gospel for strength. Like the disciples, we are reminded that the times when everything seems to have fallen apart are part of the greater plan where, out of death, we are given new life. Peace be with you.
Pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. As we look to the week ahead, let us renew our faith in the Lord, trusting in God's plan for each of us and for the world. We are the blessed followers of Christ, the ones who believe without seeing, and we can hold firm in the knowledge that, out of darkness, we are brought into the light. <laughs> Sleep. 